How's it going, my dudes? Welcome back to the channel. More cards to talk about. First up, we have Never Breath. This is a Warlock spell. Two mana, deal two damage. If you're holding a dragon, deal four damage with lifesteal instead. So this can go face. This card is nuts. Uh, comparisons, you can have uh, the spell stone from Warlock, which was already a good card before, but that could only affect minions, and it was four mana, and you had to upgrade it to get beyond four damage. You compare it to Penance, which is a priest card right now. Life still effects are more powerful in Warlock because of their self-damaging hero power and all their self-damaging spells. So you can expect Never Breath to be a, certainly a very, very powerful card. It just remains to be seen whether the whole dragon style of Warlock is going to be strong overall. But if it is a deck, you can expect Never Breath to be one of the best cards inside of it. Never Breath is so good, in fact, that you might want to be running just a small dragon package plus a Never Breath in some form of control Warlock deck if you don't want to go full dragons. Crazed Neverwing, 5 mana, 5-5. Five, five. Battle Cry, if you're holding a dragon, deal 3 damage to all characters, so Hellfire on a stick. We've seen this similarly in the past with Dustbreaker, which, ten, which turned out was one of the strongest cards from the set it came from. This is 1 mana or more, but for plus 2, plus 2, and you have the caveat that it damages the opponent hero and yourself as well, which is sometimes a good thing, sometimes a bad thing. I expect this card is going to be super, super good. Abyssal Enforcer was a 7 mana 6 6 version of this card without the dragon requirement. And that card was pretty good. Certainly an arena powerhouse. Didn't make it into too many constructed decks outside of Reno decks, but I expect this card is very, very powerful. And um, Hellfire on a Stick, you know, it's, it's obviously a very strong card. And with the two dragon Warlock cards revealed today, uh, Warlock Dragons are starting to look a little bit dangerous. Next for Rogue, we have Necrium Apothecary. 4 mana 2 5 combo. Draw a Death Rattle minion from your deck and gain its Death Rattle. Myra Rot Springs looking a bit sad right now, but this card is very, very powerful, in particular with very high cost Death Rattles. Um, the one that stands out the most, I'd say, is Mechanical Whelp. A 4 mana 2 5 that summons a 7 7, and this card draws you a Mechanical Whelp. Yeah, that's pretty good. Other ways you can apply this, maybe Wax of Dread decks. You know, this will draw you the Wax of Dread to follow up. Say you went Coin Apothecary as your turn 3. You did a 4, then you could do Wax of Dread as your 5. And it will start shuffling the candles as well. So you could do that sort of thing. I think that's a bit less powerful than just attaching a really strong Death Rattle like Mechanical Whelp to this card. Although you might find that you're going to have a deck with a small selection of Death Rattles and Wax of Dread could potentially make that selection. It'll be, I think you'll use this card in sort of tempo style decks and it'll be fairly similar to the way that you uh, used Katrina in Hunter decks in the past where they'd have Katrina and a few powerful beasts in their deck. Well, you're going to have this and a few powerful Death Rattles and it's going to be pretty good, I'd say. The only downside to this card is that it is a 2-5, so it itself on turn 4 isn't going to be killing too many things itself other than small minions. And with the 5 health, it can be a bit harder to actually get the 7-7 seven, seven out of this minion. So it is a little bit slow in terms of immediate tempo, but it's a very sticky minion. And if you, if you don't have to clear the opponent board immediately, this card is going to provide a lot of value. So, pretty good card, I'd say. In terms of uh, activating the combo, it can be tricky sometimes, but there's plenty of you know, backstabs, vendettas, one-drops you can put in Rogue. That uh, It shouldn't be the hardest thing in the world. Next up, Paladin Common, Amber Watcher. 5 mana, 4, 6, Battle Cry, Restore 8 health, so eat your heart out, Antique Hillbot. This is just a better version of you. Um, I mean... Antique Evil was a very good card back in the day. It wasn't primarily used in Paladin too much. I mean, you could put it in some control variants of Paladin, some like OTK variants of Paladin back then. But for the most part, it was used in classes like Rogue or Warlock, who didn't have access to great amounts of healing otherwise. 
But if you bolster up the stats, make a 5 mana 4 6, make it a dragon as well. The restore 8 health is super welcome. And I was talking a bit before in our other videos how dragon stats are very, very slow. So when you play them, you tend to just die. Well, this is going to prevent that. Suddenly, the 3 mana 3 3 legendary dragon, which starts hand buffing your things quite slowly, becomes a lot more appealing because you're going to be able to take games a lot longer when you have this battle cry and restore 8 health on good stats on a 5 drop. Super, super strong card. Might even find homes in non-dragon decks because it's just a very, very efficient card. Next we have Ver Anus. 6 mana 7, 6. Battlecry changed the health of all enemy minions to 1. So, a little bit like an equality on the opposing side of the board. Or Hunter's Marks, I suppose is a more apt way. To everything on the opposing side of the board it's a little bit expensive to combo with things like unleash the hounds on one turn i mean you could do it really late in the game but for the most part i think you want to be comboing with this with either things you already have on board which is fine it's going to allow you to essentially give all your minions poisonous in that sense for at least for the immediate turn and you can also combo it with things like desert spear and i was talking a bit before already that desert spear is looking quite attractive with the side quests available. Maybe you won't run both of them in the same deck, but uh, Varanus certainly combos very, very well with Desert Spear, uh, Desert Spear and Spring Paw. Kind of reminds me a little bit like Sunkeeper Taran, but a worse version, I would say, quite by quite a bit. Next, we have Kronk's Dragon Hoof, 6 mana 6 6, Battlecry, draw Galakrond. If you're already Galakrond, unleash a Devastation. Now, if you don't know what Devastation is, you get a choice of four options. One of them is an A8 Taunt that you just summon. Another option is dealing five damage to all other minions, so it's a pretty good board clear. Another one is giving plus two plus two to your board. And finally, you can deal five damage to the opposing hero and heal yourself for five. So, all a good variety of options there, sort of reminiscent of the elemental legendary Kalamos, I think his name was, uh, where you get four options which are all sort of good in their own sort of ways. Now it only works if you've already got Galakrond uh, equipped, but if you haven't, it's probably something you want to be doing, so it can draw it for you. Now, if you're playing a Galakrond deck and you've been invoking Galakrond, which is worse than good tempo, I would say, most of the time. You're going to be falling behind in tempo. It actually might be quite difficult to play a 6 mana 6-6 six, six without losing the game when it comes to this turn. So this card, I think, is better used... Obviously, it's great if you're against a slower deck to get your Galakrond, which is probably a really good use of it, but in tempo sort of matchups. You might not actually be able to get away with just playing this as a 6 minus 6 6 to draw your Galakrond. Yes, you can follow up the next turn with a Galakrond, but unless you're like Rogue, where you're going to get immediate like tempo out of your Galakrond, rather than like long-term value from things like the Warrior Galakrond or the Priest Galakrond and stuff, they're all quite slow. So, very flashy card, but practically speaking, it might be a bit harder to actually play this card to do the draw effect. But certainly good once you've got Galakrond up already. Next we have Camouflage Dirigible. Uh, pretty sweet art on this one, it's pretending to be a cloud. 6 mana 6 6 mech, Battle Cry give your other mechs stealth until your next turn, so a little conceal for your mech. Seems very fillerish. Like Stats aren't that great, the effect itself I mean, it might help you push some face damage, but I don't think it's something you really want to commit to a deck. Even if you managed to like galvanize this thing to 5 mana, it's still not that impressive of a card, I'd say. Seems seems sort of pack fillerish, but you'll, you'll end up discovering this sometimes if you're Dr. Boom, and it's not the worst thing in the world. I can't really think of any particular combos where you want your mechs to live for a turn, to be honest. And uh, finally, we have Hot Air Balloon, which is 1 mana, 1 2 mech. At the start of your turn, gain 1 health. 
Um, a little bit of a boring card. I mean, there's already one mana one three, so the mech tag is kind of nice. But to beat out Mecharu, you have to make use of the game plus one health. A lot of the times this is going to get traded away. It's not going to snowball that heavily, although it is quite nice if they can't kill it. It's particularly with magnetic effects later on down the line. It's an okay card. I don't, I don't think it's good enough to be run. I mean, in a pure mech deck, if this costs zero mana with a galvanizer, yeah, it's pretty, pretty okay, I'd say. And there is a little bit of snowball potential with the card, which is nice. I wouldn't say it's super strong as a one drop, and it probably doesn't see any play out aside of very aggressive mech decks. All right, that's all the cards for today. Stay tuned for more card reveals. Some very powerful ones released today. So power level of the set's looking very, very high, which is what you should expect for dragons, I guess. See you in the next one.